Welcome back everyone. Today was game number one of the final matchup here in the champions bracket of the American Cup being held in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, as you guys know, I won yesterday against Lenier Dominguez, also representing the US today, playing against my compatriot Wesley So. And as with all the other matches, since I'm the highest rated player, I do start with the white pieces. So let's jump right into the game. So I start by playing E4. Wesley plays e5 here, and now in this position, I play the move knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop b5, and here Wesley plays this move knight to f6. Now, many people who have followed chess over the last 20 or so years are familiar with the former world chess champion Vladimir Kramnik, who actually played this against Garry Kasparov in their world championship match. It, of course, is the Berlin variation of the Rui Lopez, and Kramnik played it. He, he really frustrated Kasparov. A fun little tidbit I will tell you guys. Um is that in 2011, I actually worked with Gary Kasparov for a period of time. And so I had access to his vaunted chess database. Now in that database, when I was going through various Berlin, Berlin lines, I noticed that Gary had a whopping 211 different files on the Berlin. So as an example or an idea of just how difficult of an opening it is to face and just how insanely hard it was for Kasparov to deal with, um, it's just giving you guys a good tidbit. So once again, Knight of six is the Berlin. It's been in fashion ever since Kramnik played it in that match against Kasparov all the way back, I believe in 2001, if I'm not mistaken, and it remains very topical. Of course, I play this with black as well, so it's a line that I'm very familiar with. So here I play d3, Wesley plays bishop c5, and now I decide to castle. Knight to d4 is played by Wesley, and here I play this very unusual move, bishop to e3. Now, I myself, as I said, have played this many times with black. In fact, I had this against Vichy Anand, the former five-time world chess champion in the candidates in 2016 with the black pieces. Now, in 2019, before the world changed forever, and I essentially retired from chess and be I became a full-time streamer, I actually had one idea that I played a couple of times in the Grand Chess Tour event, which was held in Abidjan in Cote d'Ivoire. Now, in, in, that, in, in that event, I came up with this idea to play Bishop to E3. I played against Wesley So, who I played today, but also against Sergei Karyakin from Russia as well. So I play this bishop e3 move. Now, again, back in 2019, it was a big surprise. Nowadays, much less so. Nonetheless, I thought it was worth a try. Wesley decides to trade on f3. Now, if Wesley were to capture the bishop on b5, after bishop takes c5 here, this knight is really out of play. It's kind of weirdly placed here. It can't really go to d6 or d4. Obviously, if you play a move like, let's just say, a5, a4, if the knight goes to d4, we swap, and I'm simply up a pawn here. So in this position, this knight is really awkward. If black plays d6, trying to attack the bishop, but also guarding his pawn at e5. White can play the very strong move a4, and after pawn takes bishop, pawn takes knight. White is for choice due to the weakened pawn in the center on e5, but also black has these double stacks on c7 and c5, and also this weak pawn on a7 as well. So it's very, very good for white. So Wesley decides to take the knight with check. Now, if only this wasn't check, I could capture the bishop, but here if I capture the bishop, I lose the king. That would be an illegal move, so I can't do it. So I take with the queen, of course, not with the pawn. I don't want these stacked pawns here. So after queen takes, Wesley trades, and now I take back with the queen. Now, pawn takes bishop is a completely reasonable move as well. It stacks the pawns on e4 and e3, but it does open up this f file to try and attack towards this black pawn on f7 and the knight in front of the pawn as well. But I decided to take with the queen. So Wesley plays this move c6. Now, in our previous game, which was in Abidjan and Cote d'Ivoire in 2019, Wesley actually played the move castles here, and I was able to play d4 striking hard and first in the center. And after Wesley played c6, I dropped the bishop back to e2. He played d6. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, knight to d2, bishop to e6, a4. Wesley played queen b6, and after we traded on b6 and I played rook d1, I was a little bit better in this game. Now, the game did end in a draw. Big surprise. But white has a small advantage due to these stacked pawns and the fact that black can't push the pawn to b5 so in this game wesley of course somewhat ready obviously has looked at this line since then i would hope he has that game was four years ago decides to play c6 first now after c6 here i decide to play the move bishop to c4 putting the bishop on this nice diagonal towards the pawn and the king once black castles Wesley plays the move d6, and now I play knight d2. Now, you're probably wondering, what is the difference? Why can't I just play d4 anyway? The reason that d4 is not a very good move here is black can play queen b6 since he's opened up this diagonal, and now black puts pressure on both of these pawns here on b2 and d4 with the queen on b6. Whereas if we go back here after castles d4, c6, bishop to e2, black doesn't have time to play queen b6 because here I can simply take the pawn on e5. So... 
Wesley does this. He plays d6 here. Now d4, of course, not a move because the pawn is guarded and queen b6 is a big issue. So I play this move knight to d2, trying to develop here. And what I'm aiming for with the white pieces is either to play d4 in the center or to play f4. One of these two pawn breaks is ultimately what I'm aiming for. But here, Wesley sort of snuffs it out very quickly by playing queen to b6. Now, unfortunately for me here, it's I can maybe keep queens on the board with moves like queen g3 attacking the pawn on g7 if black captures b2 i take on g7 and i win the game but unfortunately after black castles and let's say i played bishop b3 to prevent the capture of the pawn black can play a move like knight to h5 here and the knight is jumping to f4 very quickly and as gary kasparov the former world chess champion said a knight on f5 or f4 is worth at least one pawn so i don't really want to allow that so I decided to trade the queens here, and now I play this move f4. Now, one thing that I mentioned before was the game that I had against um, against Wesley, and it's worth noting that there's a big difference here. If we go back to that position, let me try and find it very quickly right here. What the biggest problem Black has is the pawns are stacked, and you can't push the pawn to b5. So when we take a look at what's happening in this game after I go f4, the problem is that after takes Black actually gets b5 here. So if I can magically say put the pawn on a4 and get some position like this as an example. White is quite a bit better because black's pawns can't be pushed here. You can't go b5, which essentially means that I'm threatening to go knight c4 and attack both these pawns on the b6 and d6 squares. So there is a difference here. So after f4 takes, Wesley plays b5 here, connecting his pawns. And now I go bishop b3, Wesley plays bishop e6, and I play his move a3, preparing to move my rook to f the f1 square and stack the two towers. I'd love to play this move right away, but after bishop takes bishop, I cannot take with the knight because then I simply lose the juicer on a2. And if I capture the pawn, now I have stacked pawns, but black also has this open a file here, and my pawns on the second rank are very, very weak. So I decide to play a3 here and Wesley Castles. Now, computer gives white a very minimal advantage simply due to the fact that I have a slightly better pawn structure here. But without queens on the board, it's very hard to prove anything. If I try to play d4 and build a big white center, this actually creates a weakness because after rook fe8, this pawn on e4 potentially becomes very, very weak down the, down the line. So in this position, I play rook af1. And Wesley plays rook a8. Now, another line that I consider was trading the bishops on e5 and trying to play his move e5 here to sort of create these stacked pawns on e5 and e6. But unfortunately, when I play a move like rook f1 here, black can simply play a move like e4, simplifying into a drawn rook and pawn endgame, or even potentially a move like knight to d5, rook to e1, and possibly a move like b4. So I thought about this. I didn't like it, of course, and that's why I rejected it. So in this position, after, after Wesley Castles, I decide to play Rook F1, a very logical human move, stacking the two towers. Now, again, if there are queens on the board, let's just say Black plays Rook B8, this might actually be a very serious threat, ruining Black's kingside pawns, but without the queens on the board, no ladies, it's uh, simply hopeless. So Wesley plays Rook E8 here, and now I decide to trade the bishops. Now, in this position, the problem that I have here is I can't build the center with D4 because after takes. If I take with the knight, I lose the pawn in the center. If I take with the pawn, then I have these two stacked pawns. Not very good. So I can't really play D4. If I take on E6 and black takes, again, I can try to play D4, but now after Rook E8, there's a lot of pressure on this pawn in E4. And if I don't play for D4, black actually is threatening to strike in the center with D5, attacking this pawn in E4. And if I ever trade, after knight takes, black has this E file. Also, the knight is jumping potentially to E3 as well, and black is for choice. So here I decide to play knight to f3, idea quite simple. If black plays d5, I can play e5 potentially, but also I'm threatening to maybe go knight d4 and knife to f5 as well. So say black plays move like rook d8, I get knight d4 targeting the rook, he moves back, and I go knight f5. This is very, very scary for black, because now let's just say you play a move like, I don't know, d5. This actually loses the game, because I have knight takes pawn, attacking the rook on e8. And after king takes knight, rook takes knight, white is simply up a pawn here, and I have the stack, and it's very, very hard for black to play. So Wesley plays d5 here, the correct move, and now I play this move e5. Now, in another world, I might have played something different. One line that I did consider very briefly was this move knight to d4, attacking the rook. Let's just say black plays rook e8, and possibly sacking the rook for the knight on f6 here. Because after takes, takes, it looks really, really scary, because black's pawns are very, very misplaced. Or let's just say you take on d5, and I get rook f6. Pawns are stacked. I have a knight and pawn for the rook. I've got a great bastion. All your pawns are loose, even though it's a right triangle, and white should be a little bit better. Now, I consider this very briefly, but then during the game, I realized that if I do actually play this, black does not have to ruin the pawn structure here. He can actually play this move rook to d8, pinning the pawn. I can't move the pawn because then I lose the knight, 
And if I play move like knight to f5, for example, black can simply go rook f8 here. And when we trade the pawns, you'll notice that I still have a knight and a pawn for the rook, but I don't have a bastion for the knight on f5 in the same way as with the knight on d4, where it can't be removed whatsoever. You can't put a rook on e4 or c4 to attack this knight because the pawn covers the squares. Knight is always targeting the pawn on b5, and the rest of your pawns are very weak. But in this situation, um, where was I? Sorry. In this situation right back here, what you'll notice is that after uh, after rook d8, not take, sorry, rook d8 here, knight f5, rook e8. Problem is when I trade, now the knight is okay on f5, but black can bring the rook down the e file. There's also rook d5 to target the knight on f5. And black even can potentially play something like c5 and c4 to try to open up both the e and the d files for the two towers. So I did consider this very, very briefly, but then I'm like, okay, it's too risky. It's not worth it to take a huge risk here. So instead I play e5, Wesley plays knight e7, and now I play this move d4. Now when I play this move d4, I'm trying to build my big white center, but Wesley correctly plays f6 to break the chain. And now it's very, very drawish because black actually has no weaknesses here. You have the double pawns, but you also have this pawn clump. All the pawns are connected and black is completely fine. So after f6, I played h3. Wesley goes rook to e7 here. And now I decide to take on f6. Wesley trades the rooks and I play rook e1. Really the only thing I can do here, I could also play knight to e5. But after knight to e4, both of us have d's knights in the center of the board. We, we have a double bastion essentially because both the knights can't be removed. But neither side can do anything either. So you have these two pretty knights that are opposing each other, but they can't do anything for either side. So I decided instead to play rook e1 here, just trying to trade off the rooks and just simplify it instantly. Wesley decides to play rook takes rook, and now I take back. It's worth noting if black tries to go knight e4 to close the e-file, I actually have knight to d2 here, pinning the knight on e4. If you move the knight, you lose the rook. If you move the king after takes, 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 king f2, this is a winning king and pawn end game for white, because after king e6, king e3, king to d5, I can now go b3. And after black plays, say, b6, I can go h4, h5, g3, g6, c3, c5. And now I can play this very important move, pawn to b4 here, and black will have to yield. If you trade on d4, it's black's move here. So when you move the king, you lose the pawn. And if you go c4, I can go king to f4 again. Black will lose his pawn on e4 on the next turn. So Wesley correctly doesn't play knight e4. Instead, he decides to trade the rooks on e1. And now after knight to e4, the rest of the game is very, very straightforward. I go knight to d3, hoping to jump to c5 maybe. But with the knight on e4, there's no square available. So we both bring our kings to the center of the board. King f7, king f1, king e6, king e2. And now he goes g5. And here I play his move g4, simply locking up the king side here that there, so that there's no play for either side. Maybe not necessary, but it seems simple enough. Wesley goes to h6, and now I play king to e3, and Wesley plays king d6, and now here I decide to make the draw with by repetition with knight to e5. The idea is simple. I want to go knight to f7. So if black plays b6, knight f7, forking the king in the pawn, simply wins the pawn, and with it, it should win the game, although apparently knight d6 and black's still okay because the knight doesn't have any jumps here. The knight's kind of stuck on the rim. Nonetheless, that is fairly beside the point. So after knight e5, Wesley goes king e6, stopping knight f7. And now I go knight d3, king d6, and we just make a repetition here. Simply because there's just not a whole lot that you can play for with either white or black. So obviously it's a little bit disappointing to draw his first game without much of a fight in this final match of the winner's bracket in the America's Cup. Nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, so we will be moving on to tomorrow when I play the second game with the black pieces of this two-game mini-match. Really looking forward to it, so we'll see what happens. At any rate, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this recap. I know it's a little bit light today because the game wasn't super scintillating and exciting for you. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed the recap. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And I'll be back tomorrow after I play in the second game of the final match in the winner's bracket here in the America's Cup in St. Louis, Missouri. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.